Park rangers at Yellowstone National Park are often asked to predict when the next major volcanic eruption will occur there. A team of USGS scientists surveying the park's underground magma reservoirs recently confirmed the standard response, probably not anytime soon. But they have shown that the area where such activity is most likely to occur has shifted. Unlike there, there's a pattern of frequent major eruptions. The area has experienced only three major events in the past two million years. Those events are called caldera forming, because the molten rock that empties the underground reservoir leaves a void, causing the overlying land to collapse, eventually forming a bowl-shaped depression. Beneath that depression, called the caldera, is a magma reservoir. Recent surveys suggest that the magma inside it has not stopped. It now appears to be shifting northeast of the Yellowstone caldera. For the past 160,000 years or so, the magma reservoir has been mostly under the caldera. However, a number of geological factors suggest that, despite the movement, the reservoirs are not capable of erupting, the paper says. That doesn't mean the region will be completely free of volcanic activity, just that it won't be as explosive as the previous Big Three. Geologists' magma mapping efforts have revealed seven distinct areas. Some reservoirs feed into each other, like the Great Lakes. The reservoirs lie between 2.5 miles and 30 miles underground. They were perhaps most surprised by the northeastern pocket, both because of its location and its composition. Previous estimates had not placed this area as a potential producer of volcanic activity. The magma is also layered like a parfait, with two flavors. The lower level is rich in basalt, while the upper level is rich in silica. The lower level essentially helps keep the upper level warm. The upper-level chambers of silica-rich molten rock measure between 240 cubic miles and 300 cubic miles. That's a lot of magma. Indeed, it's comparable to the amount likely released during each of the previous three major eruptions. But the magma doesn't appear to be going away anytime soon, Mark Stelton, a USGS scientist with the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, wrote in an online column called Caldera Chronicles. Stelton wrote that the short-term chance of a volcanic eruption is about the same as the chance of getting hit in the head by a baseball while standing outside a major league stadium. Predicting the frequency of major Yellowstone eruptions requires factoring in how often such events occur over a given time period. Based on our current knowledge of Yellowstone's eruptive history, the annual probability of a volcanic eruption is about 0.001%. But even this low number is probably an overestimate in the short term, Stelton wrote in the column. There is no sign of an imminent volcanic eruption based on monitoring data, and we know that the magmatic system beneath Yellowstone is largely solid. Over the past few years, several new insights into the nature of Yellowstone's magma reservoir have been published. These results are based largely on seismic data, especially on the varying speeds of seismic waves in the subsurface. Seismic waves record information about the structure and composition of the subsurface as they travel through the Earth. From the seismic source to the receiver, the travel time can be used to determine how fast the waves are traveling. Hot or partially molten rock slows down the propagation of waves compared to solid rock. So seismic waves that travel slower than expected may indicate the presence of hot or molten material. However, measuring the travel time from a single source to a receiver provides only average information along the wave's path. Therefore, it is difficult to accurately characterize areas underground that can be highly variable and complex. For example, beneath a volcano, more data is needed. Much like a digital camera, where more megapixels give you a better picture, 
More seismic data provides better resolution of what the subsurface looks like. The current seismic network in Yellowstone is managed by the University of Utah Seismograph Station and consists of about 40 stations. The network not only detects earthquakes, but also offers important opportunities to probe subsurface structures. Scientists have used seismic wave velocities from earthquakes occurring around Yellowstone and even hundreds of miles away to image the current magmatic system beneath the Yellowstone caldera which consists of two reservoirs stacked on top of each other, one containing viscous rhyolite magma at depths of 5 to 19 kilometers, and the second containing more fluid basaltic magma 20 to 50 kilometers below the surface. Based on seismic wave velocities, the fraction of melt in the total reservoir system is less than 10% overall, assuming the liquid phase of the material is widely distributed in the solid rock matrix. The upper reservoir contains more melt, perhaps up to 20% by recent estimates, than the lower reservoir, but both are largely solid. However, this image does not provide any information about the texture of the reservoirs or how the melt would be stored, for example, evenly distributed, all in one place, or in a small container. The University of Utah, in partnership with the University of New Mexico and Yellowstone National Park, is trying to address this knowledge gap with a temporary deployment of hundreds of seismic sensors across the region. The field campaign was conducted from August to September 2020, when about 650 autonomous seismic sensors, or nodes, were installed along roads and trails. These are the same types of sensors that have been used to study the dynamics of Old Faithful and steamboat geysers. The 2020 Seismic Array is designed to passively record seismic waves generated by the ocean known as microseisms. Although the energy of microseisms is small, they can be detected by modern seismometers even very far from shore and have characteristics that make them ideal for studying the crustal structure beneath Yellowstone. A recent study published in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters suggests that images derived from dense array data better delineate the boundaries of the magma reservoir and better capture its physical properties than data from the backbone seismic network alone. The results show that seismic velocities are very slow near the top of the magma reservoir at a depth of 5 kilometers, 3 miles. The new imagery based on dense arrays is also highly consistent with recent findings that rely on supercomputing power and analysis of previously collected seismic data.